before I forget to do so. Better, better, much better. All right, so like I said, we're going to be modeling this motor that uh, Tom, one of the members here at the Milwaukee Makerspace, is going to be putting in his Power Wheels car. And um, we're going to do that in Fusion 360. This is a great beginner project, a uh, great starter project, but we're also going to add in um, a McMaster car component, so that'll be kind of a new thing for class today. And let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start by making a new document here. So um, if you haven't, if you've got a document open already and um, you want to make a new one, uh, Fusion 360 is a tabbed environment here. So all these are open. I've got a couple open files here. And if I want to make a new document and not close the ones that I currently have open, uh, you should see my browser. It's just full of tabs because uh, I love tabs. So you just have to hit that plus button and then you never have to close a fusion file ever. It's great. You can just have 50,000 tabs just like in your Google browser. All right. So I'm going to start by creating a sketch and I'm going to go ahead and click on the create and then create sketch tool here. So I've got my three drawing surfaces that I can draw on. And you guys know if you've been joining us for a while, I tend to draw on the front just as kind of a rule of thumb. I start my sketches on the front there. And I'm going to start by making a, a circle. So I'll grab the circle tool from my create menu in my circle menu. And the easiest circle to make is this center diameter circle. And that'll work for our purposes. We're basically going to make a couple of center diameter circles that represent hey, the... Carl? Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Me. On, on my um, screen, I see myself and Mike's image very large, equally as large as yours. Is there a way that we could be reduced so that we could see your... Um, uh, whatever it is, your, your files clearer or larger? Hey. Hey Tim, uh, if you click on the right, if you right click Carl's screen and then pin it, it's the first um, icon, it should become larger. Where is that? If you right click Carl's screen, there's a there's three icons, click on the pin icon. Yeah. Hover, or actually hover over Carl's screen, my bad. Okay. And then click on that pin first icon on the left. Oh yeah, there's kind of like some little icons that pop up near the middle. Yep, just like what Carl's doing with, with my, with all my, on my screen. Mm. Um, Bingo oh. bango, thank you, Michael. All right, yeah. beautiful. Hey, Carl, Thanks, Mike. I'm not, sure, um, I'm not sure if Tim is doing, experiencing this too, but it's pretty blurry on my side. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, really? Tim, oh, I'm seeing that, please. Uh, let me see if I can mess with the setting here. So... No problem if you can't fix it. Let's see. Uh, if I'm in settings... I thought there was a... I'm putting out 1920, supposedly. Um, no problem. I can still see you. It's just a little bit blurry. My my like my face or the fusion is a little blurry. Oh boy, that's kind of a bummer. That's a drag. Um, well, let's roll with it for now and let me know if it gets worse. Um, Sounds good. All right, cool. So I'm gonna start by creating this center diameter circle, like I said. So I'll click one time and then I'll move my my mouse outward here. Um, and this circle is gonna be 4.13 inches. Um, so we're, we're currently drawing in inches. If you haven't reset your document settings um, to have default to inches, you can always type in that unit. Um, and just a reminder, in the document settings here, we can spin down this little triangle and then hover over our current units. And you can see that we are currently drawing in the active units of freedom units. Um, as opposed to the international standards that the rest of the world follows. All right, so let me, 
<laughs> where we got our circle made. Um, you know, let's draw the shaft for our motor while we're here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my circle tool one more time, either by hitting the C key on the keyboard or in uh, the create menu under circle and then center diameter circle. And I'm gonna place this, and this is gonna be a 3 8 shaft, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what that motor size is. Uh, if you ever have these measurements that you know are, are in this circle and are difficult to read, uh, all those measurements you can click and drag and kind of move them off to the side so if it's easier to read them somewhere else, you can move them somewhere else. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click finish sketch here because now we are done making uh, this sketch. Or for now we're done making this sketch. Everybody here knows that I'm a stickler for naming things, so I, we've got a sketch that we've made, and I'm going to go ahead and rename this the motor. I mean, I suppose we could just call this the motor. It's the motor profile, or motor diameter, maybe, or motor side view. Anything is better than, than sketch one. Um, or sketch 27 as the case may be. All right, so now that we've got, what's that? Sorry, ignore me. No, you're um, good. <laughs> referencing something no one here is gonna think of. That's all right, there that's all right. All right, so we're gonna start creating some three-dimensional shapes here from our two-dimensional sketch. And we'll do that in the create menu. I'm just gonna come on down to this extrude option. And I'm going to extrude both of the item, both of my circles here. And I'm just going to, our motor is kind of in, in three parts. So we've got kind of a, um, a front cap, and then we've got kind of a middle section, and then there's an end cap to this motor. And so I'm going to kind of do these with three separate extrusions. So I'm going to make my, my first extrusion a quarter of an inch. Um, and that's going to be the, the extrusion that will be for the front, uh, for one of the caps of our motor. So uh, let me just pull this back up here again. So you can see this motor here has kind of got like a big, you know, say quarter inch plate or so on one end and another quarter inch plate on the other end. And then in the middle um, is like a hollow cylinder with all the windings and the stator and all that kind of stuff in it. So we're going to draw that all with one sketch but make separate extrusions for it. So I went ahead and I turned my motor profile sketch off. Now I've got a body here I can name so um, this is the shaft plate. Sure that's as good a name as any. Um, and now I'm going to spin around to the other side of this. So, so my sketch is here and I'm going to spin around to the other side of this um, of this cylinder that we've made here, and I'm going to grab my extrude tool again. So the extrude tool will not only extrude from a sketch profile, but it'll extrude any flat plane. So the back of this cylinder is a flat plane that I can choose and extrude from that. So I can just pull my arrow out here, and instead of saying join, I'm going to say make it a new body, because uh, this is a whole separate part of the motor here. And now for a distance, I'm going to do some math here. So our total distance is uh, 5.9 inches. However, uh, that's the total distance of our of our motor. So if I type in 5.9, that's going to be too long because uh, I've got a quarter inch plate on each end that I'm going to extrude. So what I'm going to do is 5.9 inches minus a half an inch. So that'll account for the quarter inch plate that I'm putting on each of, this, each of these ends of the motor. And then our motor in total will be 5.9 inches.
And again, we're making this a new body. So in the operation here, instead of the default of join, we're going to change that to new body. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on OK here because I'm done making that extrusion. And we've got another body to name. So this is the, uh, it's the middle. Close enough. It's good enough for me. And now we can do one more extrusion uh, f f to make the body of our motor here. And we're going to use that same technique to make the, the back plate of our motor here. So I'm going to grab my extrude tool and I'm going to choose the back end of that cylinder, kind of the trailing end of that cylinder that we just made. And now this is going to be another quarter of an inch extrusion. And again, instead of join, this is going to be a new body. And then I'm going to say OK. All right, so we've got yet a third body to name. So I'm going to go ahead and name that. And this is the, I'm just going to call it the back plate. Again, anything is better than, than uh, 1, 2, 4, 17. All right, so now we've got a solid chunk here that is the middle of our motor. And in reality, the, that is not a solid chunk right in the middle of our motor. It is a, um, just a, a cylinder, um, a tube. It is a tube. And, and we can make this a tube uh, using just a real simple command. So there's a, a command in the modify menu here called shell. And uh, the shell command is super handy. It, it's really uh, handy for more complex objects or if you want to make a box or a case of some sort. Uh, but what the shell command does is it allows us to pick two or one or more openings um, of an object and kind of make it hollow, I suppose you could say. So um, if, when I've got my shell tool selected here, I can click on any flat surface and now I can specify a distance here so if I make this like 0.05 um, now you can see if I look down the bottom of it it's made kinda like a cup right so I can look down and I can see that it's got that it's closed at the other end but I can also come over to the back side of this Oh, well, let me do it before I enter in dimensions. So you have to select both of your openings before you enter in dimensions. So I just uh, changed my thickness back down to zero. And now it will let me choose to have two sides selected. You can see I've got two faces and bodies selected here in the shell window. And now if I specify a distance, now you can see if I look down the middle of it, now we've got a tube instead of a cylinder. Um, and you can do this with as many faces as you need. If you got like crazy curvy shapes and you want to kind of hollow it out, the shell command will 100% will do that most of the time. Um, it's important to mention that I can also specify the direction that I'm making the shell. So if I turn on my um, my shaft plate and my back plate and now I kind of look right down the, the end of it if I could change this to the outside and then it will totally freak out uh, in theory I could change it to outside and no and then it forgot how big it was so uh, 0 0.025 so now instead of making my shell kind of like inside of that volume that I had created initially, that volume of that cylinder, it makes the shell kind of outside of that volume. So it's kind of like you modeled the the amount of space that you want to have inside of your cup or your your tube and then you uh, you created your shell outside of that as opposed to 
um, modeling the outer walls of the tube, uh, which is what we did, model the outer wall. So we want to make this direction inside there. And then I'm going to say OK. So now I can turn off like my my front plate, and you can see I've got a hollow, I've got hollow bits in the inside here. Um, I suppose we could model like the stator and and all the bits inside of this motor, but uh, we're going to go ahead and, and gloss over that for now. Maybe we'll come back and model a stator later. But for now, we can model the shaft of our bless you, of our. Uh, Power Wheels car motor here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start by the first thing we need to do is we need a hole in our front plate here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my extrude tool again and I'm going to specify that in that small little circle, that little 3 8 inch circle that we made and I'm just going to drag that inwards. So because I'm dragging it in towards towards my model as opposed to out away from it. Uh, so here you can see my default operation is set to join. If I drag it inwards, my default operation goes to cut here. Now I'm cutting a hole in that front plate. And I can say OK. Now that we've got a hole in that front plate, we can actually make our shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my extrude tool yet again and I'm going to specify that circle uh, that I just used to cut the hole for my shaft and I'm going to um, now make the actual shaft. Let's make it a one inch I got to do a negative one for some reason um, a one inch shaft there and I'd actually like this shaft to go down the length of the motor a little bit too. So right now it's just coming out from my from my motor and if I change an option here in the extrude window uh, where it says direction here I can change the direction from one side to two sides and now I can drag my motor in as well and, and if I want to see a little bit I can turn off my middle body here so the body that uh, is kind of obscuring how far my shaft is going down inside of my motor column is uh, obscured by that middle section there so uh, if I wanted to I can make this motor shaft go way down inside of my motor uh, by extruding it two sides at the same time and then this as well, we want to make this a new body. Because our, our shaft needs to rotate freely, and it can't rotate freely if it's got, uh, if it's rubbing up against all these sides here. All right, so now I'm going to say OK. Now we've got one more body to model here, and this is going to be our shaft. All right, so now we're going to draw the kind of the mounting plate of this motor. So uh, here's our motor, and you can see that it's got a little bent sheet metal mounting plate down here. Uh, now I don't have very good, I don't have any dimensions for this, so we're going to just kind of guess um, at what this is and then. Uh, we can always modify these later, but based on what I'm kind of looking at here, I'm thinking it extends out a little more than halfway down or about halfway down the motor here. Um, so we're going to, you know, guess that. Uh, I can see that it, it looks like it starts uh, like this front face here is about even with this so we're going to kind of roll with that and make some guesses here uh, about the actual dimensions because we don't have any right now but the beautiful thing about parametric design is you can always go back and edit things and change them later and uh, if we draw with that in mind now 
It won't bite us in the butt later on. So um, I'm going to draw this plate uh, at the same plane that I'm, or the same sketch that I drew my motor profile. Uh, and I suppose there's a couple of schools of thought of like making things separate sketches. Um, but I think the sketch is not overly complicated already, so it's it's easy to add things to it. Also, I want to use some geometry that we've already got with this sketch here. I want to use the diameter of our motor as some of the geometry that we use in the mount of our motor here. So um, it's a good excuse to add to this current sketch as opposed to making a new one. All right, so I right clicked on the motor profile sketch and I said edit sketch. And now you can see I've gone back in time to when I first made this sketch. So all the things that I did down here in my timeline after I made this sketch are all grayed out. And uh, you can't see any of those bodies because we've gone kind of back in time to when we were making this sketch. And I'm going to start by making an offset here. So I'm going to grab my modify tool and come down to this offset option here. And I'm going to offset my outer circle there. And I'm going to offset it an eighth of an inch. Because uh, I'm guessing I'm going to make that out of a little eighth inch piece of, uh, uh, or it's like an eighth inch piece of uh, sheet metal, basically. And then I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to draw my two little wings, um, my two little mounts here. So I'm going to grab my line tool. And I'm going to start by making a line at the center of my circles. And this line is going to come out um, and down here. And it's going to be, you know, I suppose it needs to be roughly parallel with that line there. So, you know, let's start by making a line straight down and uh, make it go all the way to the edge. Yeah, to the edge of our. Uh, outer circle there. Um, this line, I just, I'm going to turn this into a construction line because I just need that for reference to make this next line that I'm going to make right here. So now I'm going to draw one more line from the intersection of that line uh, outward here. Um, now I suppose that we could have, we could have made this line without this line. Let's see if we can let's see if we can do that just as an exercise. Uh, I'm going to delete that line. I'm going to delete this line. Uh, I'm wondering if we can make this line down here with just make it appear where we just had it using constraints. So my goal is to have a line down here um, you know, that's called like three inches long. And what I want to have is this line be tangent to the circle. And also I want it to be straight horizontal. Uh, so we can do that with constraints. We can totally do that with constraints. So if I come up here to my constraints menu and I choose a tangent constraint, And now I choose the line that I just made, and then I choose the outer circle. Now I've got those that tangency constraint that's been added. So now that line is always going to be tangent to the circle. And now if I grab one more constraint that is my horizontal vertical constraint, and I pick that line, then it pops right in place there. So, you know, there there's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, my my first thought is is often to like if I want if I know I want to have a line down here uh, that you know starts at the base of this circle m my first thought is often to kind of draw some draw some uh, construction lines into place in order to get it there but uh, it doesn't need to be that way you can you can put things in place using these constraints options and 
um, you know, these are pretty powerful tools, and it's good to know that they exist. All right, so uh, this line also is going to be just a construction line here. So we've got a, a construction line going on here for it that's going to represent one of the wings of our uh, motor mount. And uh, let's go ahead and make one that represents the other wing of our motor mount. And uh, I'm going to do that in a similar way. Um, I'm going to draw that line that I took out initially anyway. That line going straight down. And, and I'm going to make that into a construction line. And, and after we get this little section done here, I'll kind of explain why I'm drawing it this way. So I'm going to draw one more line here. And this line is going to um, be kind of the tangent point, I guess you can say, for the other wing of our motor mount. So now I've got one more line to draw outward. And the, the key here with this line is I just want to make sure that this line is uh, perpendicular to this uh, other line I just drew here. And again, I'm going to make it like three inches out or so, just go, so it goes way out there. All right, so now uh, I'm going to add one more dimension to this. So. Uh, I want to have specified a dimension that is the angle between these two lines here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my dimension tool, uh, either by clicking on Create and then coming down here to Sketch Dimension. Uh, or I can hit the D key on my keyboard. And I'm just going to place a dimension that represents the angle between those two uh, lines and and I'm not going to specify that dimension right now, but uh, the reason I'm doing I did this whole thing here is uh, I've got this uh, this motor here and it appears as though the two wings of that motor aren't like parallel with each other they're not the same plane they don't mount to the same plane. And I don't know what that angle is right now. So, you know, what, those, what that angle is, I'm, I'm uncertain of it. So what I wanted to do is to build in, into our sketch, some sort of angle measurement between those two plates. And that way, when um, we actually get a hold of this motor that Tom is getting, we'll be able to go back into our sketch We'll be able to go back into to this sketch here, uh, have a motor in hand, and measure those plates, uh, measure that angle, um, and then we'll be able to know what to change on our drawing once we uh, once we know what measurement we actually have. Does that make sense, guys? That does make sense. Yeah. Whatever. However, what doesn't make sense? Uh, I don't know how to get the dimension to be an angle. So in order to uh, place an angle dimension there, so if I grab my, my dimension tool one more time, um, so I click on the first line, and then if I move my mouse out, I just have like a regular mm -hmm. uh, distance measurement here. If I move my mouse over and click on the second line, mm -hmm. and then move my mouse in between them again, uh, okay. then I've got a nice uh, angled measurement here. So. We were just, uh, so that's how you place that angle measurement. And again, right now what that measurement is is not that important, um, but we just need to have something to change later. All right, so now we can kind of finish placing these wings here. So I'm going to grab my line tool again, and uh, I'm going to uh, click and, and place a line at the, you know, I want to, I don't want to make construction lines anymore. Now I want to make actual lines. So uh, in my line type, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this construction <coughs> button here. All right, so now I can place a line here. And this line is going to go all the way from the center of my circle um, 
to like this outside edge out here and again I don't really know where this is but we're kind of guesstimating right now and then that line is going to come out directly down our um, our kind of construction line and I'm going to make it go an inch and a half that looks like too much I'm going to do an inch we're going to roll with an inch right now All right, and I'm going to do the same kind of operation to the other side here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab my line tool. I'm going to start at the begin at the middle of my circles, and it's going to kind of come out like roughly here-ish, and then our line is going to come down another inch or so. And then I'm going to kind of pause here. I'm going to kind of place these measurements so they're not all on top of each other. Kind of do a little check-in. Are, are you guys good? Did you, uh, are you following along at home? Following yes, along we are. Here? Cool. Good, good. All right, perfect. So, now I'm going to do one last thing to this sketch. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of trimming. And, and hopefully that won't mess us up later. Sometimes when you use the trim tool and then you come back and want to make changes, it uh, doesn't play so nice, but we're, we're going to roll with it this time. So in the modify menu here, I'm going to come down and grab this tool that says trim here. Now the trim tool lets us cut away uh, lines that we don't need and, and we just kind of need um, kind of the lines that are going to represent the the mount part of our uh, sketch here so I can trim away all that uh, all that line that existed uh, for our offset circle that extra line up there I can also trim off these lines here that connect um, that kind of bridge the two circles and so let me kind of zoom in here so you can see that a little bit better. So now, I suppose we could also trim off these these lines in here. These are superfluous. Um, so now we just have uh, a sketch or a series of lines. If I highlight them all, it's just this. This is just a single continuous solid line here that continues around the motor and what we're going to use is we're going to use this line to uh, with the flange tool so maybe this will be the first time that we've used the flange tool here in quite a while but I can go ahead and click on finish sketch and we can give that a shot so uh, that piece on the motor um, to me looks like it is a bent piece of uh, of sheet metal. So if I zoom in to here we go, that that that's a good angle. That to me looks like it's a piece of sheet metal that's been bent into place there, and and we can do sheet metal bending in Fusion, uh, which is great. So if you actually needed to make this motor mount, you could um, model in Fusion and then bend it afterwards, and you could get a flat pattern right from Fusion, which is fantastic. So uh, I've got my lines that represent kind of the bends and angles of this uh, of this piece of sheet metal here and now if I leave the solid workspace up here at the top and I go over to the sheet metal workspace I get all of my sheet metal tools um, really for all intents and purposes almost everything in the sheet metal area really the only tool is a flange tool so th there are many, many ways of using the flange tool. You can, you can use the flange tool um, on like a square and make just like a flat piece of sheet metal out of it. And then you can, you know, bend up sides from that or you can use it like we're using it here. If I grab this flange tool here and I specify uh, this line here, now for me, hopefully, for you too, it's making a nice 
Uh, I've got this chaining option selected here, so because I've got this chaining uh, checkbox selected, it lets me pick that whole thing all at the same time. And then I've got a little arrow now, and I can drag that arrow back. And I think I was saying this was like roughly half of the length of the thing. And uh, I can do some math in my in my dimension option there to just say, all right, my length is 5.9 inches. Let's just go ahead and say 5.9 divided by 2. Now we've got some rules here. So the when you're using anything in the sheet metal area here, um, these rules are very important. So the rules tell you, uh, A, how thick the sheet metal is. Um, and the reason that that is important now is because uh, different thicknesses of sheet metal and even different kinds of uh, sheet metals, so like a stainless steel sheet metal, will bend differently than an aluminum sheet metal, even though it's got the same thickness, if that makes sense. So, you know, specifying the um, specific kind of material that you're bending is important. Um, my guess is this is aluminum um, because otherwise I feel like that might interact with the motor in some way, shape, or form, the, the stators on the motor, uh, but I could be wrong, and, and this is something we can change later, so uh, I'm going to make this aluminum in inches for now, and, and the thickness of this um, is a 0 .08, so... It feels probably a little thin, but uh, like I said, we can always change this later um, at any point. So now we've got our, our flange made here, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now I want to modify the shape of this flange a little bit because um, the flange that they... Oh, and you know what? Here, let's look down the center of this. So... Um, Right now, our, our bracket, our mount is not touching our motor, and um, that's going to be detrimental to the functionality of this motor. So I'm going to go ahead and, and choose to edit that feature, edit that flange feature that I just made to bring up my flange menu again, um, because we can choose an option here. And right now, the thickness is set to side one. If I change this to side two, then it goes ahead and it, it makes that the thickness of the material be on the opposite side of that line. So now it'll be, you know, kind of right up on our motor here. Um, you know, it's still not, still not touching, but that's just because our offset was different than our thickness of our material is. We're going to go ahead and glaze over that for now um, and move on. So... Actually, you know what? Let's not glaze over that. So, we got time here. We can fix this. So, um, you remember our sheet metal was 0 0.08, and, and we made our offset 0.125. So, in our motor profile, if I right-click on it and choose Edit Sketch, did it get rid of my... Sure did. Um, but... This circle is blue, which means it does not have, it's not fully constrained. So my guess is the way it's not fully constrained is it doesn't have a radius specified. And I wonder if I add a radius now. So um, let's go ahead and let me grab my dimension tool. So I'm going to hit the D key on my keyboard. And if I click on that circle, and place a dimension, sure enough. So it's saying it didn't give me a warning saying that this was over constrained. And now if I give this a dimension that is uh, 4.13 plus my 0 0.08, which is the thickness of my uh, sheet metal rule. Oh boy, that went way out there. That's a radius. 
it's given me a radius dimension and I thought so I want to do 4.13 divided by 2 and then add the thickness of my sheet metal there we go that's what we're looking for alright so now that we modified our radius of that now if I say finish sketch now we're we're sitting right on top of it again did did that make did I go too fast is that good for you guys at home Any almost guys here I'm running into an issue where the the thickness of the sheet metal is overlapping into the the opposite problem of what I had is overlapping into it so tell you what let me pop over and how, how are you guys at home Tim and, and Mike did you guys get that almost I'm working on it okay cool I'll give you a second because I'm gonna check on something here I'm trying to go back to edit that feature but it's not giving me an option to change thicknesses for this thing so what I did is I changed the in the sketch right um but I think, so is this not gonna automatically, because I didn't pick a thickness for this when I first made it. Oh, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, is this the, your sheet metal pen? Um, it should be. Okay, cancel. And then right click on that down there and say edit feature. And then that's what it gives me. Interesting. Spin that little track. Interesting. So um, we had an issue here. Uh, in I'm, your, I'm having the same issue. Uh, you don't. You don't. So here, if I click on this and say Edit Feature, oh, look at that! I don't have my rules anymore. Where did my rules go? You know, I wonder now if once we've set our set our rules um, for our sheet metal, once we specify it here, um, those rules are document wide. So, do you have over in your browser? Do you guys have a rule that says something inches or something millimeters? Where is that? Uh, over in our in our browser here, I've got. Oh, yeah. And so now, if I hover over this, uh, and then you click on the little icon next to it. That will let us change our, our sheet metal rule. That that's for the whole that's document wide. So now I can change this from oh. say inch aluminum, um, which is what I specified to like stainless steel millimeters or um, you know steel inches. Um, you can also um, make your own rules. Um, so I'm going to click on cancel because mine are correct, but uh, is this where the sheet metal rules are? Yeah, here we go. So so I uh, I have, have a couple of my own rules that I've set up. So in the modify section here, um, there's this option that says sheet metal rules here. Yes. And if we open up these sheet metal rules, um, we can spin down the library thing and, and um, 
there's this little icon that says new rule here. So you can make your own rules. Um, I, I think it's weird that like there's not like gauges of steel. So, you know, I have, I've made a, a 16 gauge rule and I've made an 18 gauge rule for some projects at work. Um, generally the K factor is half approximately of the thickness of the metal, um, just as kind of a rule of thumb, but you, you can Google some of these things like what's the K factor of, um, you know, 16 gauge stainless steel. Um, and you know, find that information that way, and then you can you can make your own sheet metal rules here. Um, so, and then add them to the list, and then you Carl? can ha yeah, go ahead, Tim. I'm not seeing the button to push for new rule. So, when you to make a new rule, you have to click on the modify menu. Okay. And then come down to sheet metal rules. All uh, right. And then. Now here in sheet metal rules, um, now if I hover over the currently in this design uh, aluminum inches, I can either edit that aluminum inch rule or I can make a new rule. I see it. Cool. And what is the thickness that we have for our aluminum inches? Um, so I, it's 0 .08 is, is okay. what it's set at right now. Okay. That's where I'm at too. Okay, good. Cool. All right. So now the the that last was a lot of thing. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, yeah. The the last thing that I want to do here. Oh, I got a body to name here. This is my um, mount. Um, gosh, I wanted to do a couple more things. So the what do we want to do here? Ten minutes left. Pressure's on. All right, so uh, I wanted to kind of demonstrate that the beauty of this sheet metal piece here now is um, we can see what it looks like flat. So in this create menu, we can come down here to uh, convert, oh no, that's wrong, to create flat pattern. Um, and, and this is super simple because we've got a sheet metal component here. I can just specify any flat surface and that'll be my kind of stationary face and then everything will unfold around that. And I can say, okay. And now here's my, here's my piece of my flat pattern of sheet metal here. So, um, if you ever want to make a box out of sheet metal, that, that's super useful. Uh, I made a couple of sheet metal boxes for work. Uh, this is a great tool to be able to use. So you can you know, model it here and then uh, unfold it. And then here are your bend lines are the long dash, short dash line. And then this is kind of like the radius of your bend is kind of the outer dashed lines there. Um, and I can just say finish flat pattern here. And, and now I'll have that anytime in my browser here, I can just click on this flat pattern and then choose the little radio button next to it. And that will activate the flat pattern and, and show me my pattern there. Um, the last thing that I want to do here uh, before we end in a couple of minutes is to add a sprocket onto the outside of this. And uh, I know what you're thinking. Dude, we can't model a sprocket in 10 minutes. And you're correct. And, and we are not going to. Um, and that's because some things are, are nice to draw uh, and we learn some things while we draw them. Some things are, are pointless for us to draw. And, and I think a, a sprocket is, is one of those things, um, like a nut or a bolt, no need to model a nut or a bolt there are places you can go to find those things already drawn for you. And, and one of them is here in the insert menu. Uh, I buy so much more things from McMaster Car because their entire catalog is right here in Fusion 360 for me to just reach out to and grab. So if I click on insert and then insert McMaster Car component, um, I don't know if you guys have ever had a job where you had to like buy lots of stuff from McMaster Car, but we do at the museum a lot. 
Um, this is the McMaster Car website, basically. So if you've ever been to the McMaster Car website, it looks just like this. And I can type in in this search window right up here, uh, sprockets. And now I'm staring at all the sprockets that McMaster Car has to offer. Um, over in the left side of the screen here, there's kind of like a bunch of constraints about what kind of sprocket I'm looking for. Um, the main constraint that, that we're going to have here is we have a shaft diameter that's 3 eighths of an inch. So if I scroll down and choose this four shaft diameter 3 eighths, now it's going to kind of filter that down so I'm only looking at um, sprockets that are 3 eighths of an inch. Now the chain that we modeled uh, I modeled off of this uh, ANSI roller chain, so if you drew some chain with us, you're going to want to make sure you have one of these sprockets for ANSI roller chain. And now we just have to specify a number of teeth. Um, probably a, a higher gear ratio is best, so I'm going to pick the least number of teeth, uh, so 12 tooth. And then if I click on this little uh, CAD menu here, so almost everything that McMaster Car offers, they've got a, um, a CAD file for. Um, now, if you, Mike, I, I think you draw with SolidWorks at work, is that right? Correct. Yeah, so you can, uh, you know, get yourself a nice SolidWorks file uh, right out of McMaster Car, and you can download this from the website just like you can download it here inside of Fusion. Um, so if you ever need a SolidWorks file for a McMaster car part, they've got them already made for you. And I can just click on, for us in Fusion here, we're going to click on this 3D step file. And then I'm going to choose download. Now I'm going to move this off to the side and I'm going to place it and I'm going to kind of rotate it uh, on purpose. I'm going to do it completely wrong. Um, so where I want this to be is right at the end of our motor, but if I, if I spin this off so it's, you know, at the wrong angle, um, and then just say OK, now we can place this after the fact using the last tool that we're going to uh, learn in this class here, which is the Align tool. Uh, if you drew clocks with us, I don't know, Tim, you may have drew and drawn clocks with us. We used no, this. No, I wasn't in that class. Oh, all right, all right. Um, we, did, uh, um, we did something where we aligned like this. Okay, cool. All right. So in the modify menu, yes, in the modify menu, there is this align tool here. This is really great for precisely locating two different parts that you want to locate especially if they have some sort of, you know, commonality. So um, I can hover over the first thing you want to do is the part that you want to do the moving. So uh, I want this bracket to move to the motor. I don't want the motor to move to this bracket. So I'm going to click on and specify the kind of the center of that little circle on the sprocket first. And then I'm going to hover over the end of my shaft of my motor and, and click on that as my two object. And then it's going to go ahead and drop that right into place. And I can say Oakley Doakley. So now we've got our, our motor all mo modeled and drawn here and, uh, and we're good to go. We made it just in time. We, we got a sprocket modeled in less than 10 minutes. And, uh, Not bad. And that was the goal. Yeah, that's a good goal to have. Cool. So, so that's it for, for this week. Um, next week, I think we might try to put some of our car parts together into a single document because we've got a lot of parts now. And, and it might be nice for us to, uh, so you can see in my, in my uh, sidebar over here, all the parts that we've modeled. Um, it might be nice to try to get the steering in there. Um, 
Tom might bring his frame in next week, and we might model Tom's frame and then uh, drop all the parts onto that frame. But, uh, but we'll see. Tim, did you draw a frame with us? I did early on. Okay, cool. Right on. So we've got, do, yeah. we've got something that we can drop together. And you have like a, a hub and a, do you have a hub and a tire? Uh, yes. And a bearing block, maybe? I don't have a bearing block. Okay, right on. All right. So, yeah, maybe we'll figure out how to share some documents around uh, between here and there. And um, that way we can figure out how to mash these files. All these files on the left we're going to mash into a single document and uh, have part of a car going as opposed to parts of a car going, which is what we got right now. All right, so Great. if there are no other questions, we'll see you guys next week. All right, thank uh -huh. you very much. Thanks, Carl. All right, hopefully, I'm, I tried recording this, so hopefully I'll be able to post this recording and fingers crossed it worked. Um, that way, if you miss a class in the future, I'm gonna to try to record these and then throw them up on the YouTube and maybe post a blog post about it. Um, yeah, they'll be pretty informal. Uh, just me looking like an idiot on the YouTube. Join the crowd. All right, <laughs> All right thanks guys. We'll see you next Take week. Take care. Bye-bye. I have a weird technical question. Yeah. Okay. Stop this. How do I stop? I leave call. There we go. And then stop.